Hey guys, it's Damian from Marketing Food Online, and today we are going to get into Idaho's cottage food laws and food-based businesses from home in the great state of Ohio, Idaho. So let's get started. Okay, guys, so let's get into Idaho's cottage food laws. I've had a few emails from people who live in Idaho who have been subscribing to my channel. And I have not covered uh, cottage food laws and the home-based food business environment in Idaho. So I wanted to do a really um, brief podcast and get into some of what you can and cannot do. And then I'll, of course, have some more information down below, some links for you guys to check out um, some of Idaho's uh, governmental agency websites that you can be, get more specific information about. So let's delve right into it. So, yes, Idaho has actually had a cottage food um, environment for quite some time. Um, they have actually updated some of their um, laws and regulations in regards to that, some uh, bills that they have introduced into the House um, around uh, 2015 when they were looking to more specifically detail um, kind of a roadmap of what you can make and what you can't in the state of Idaho, specifically about uh, cottage food businesses. There's been a lot of questions up and down and nothing really definite and more defined. So now that they've done that, um, they're able to spell out a little more specifically what you can make. So I'm going to go through some of the allowed venues. And by the way, Idaho is actually one of the few states where there is no sales, no dollar sales limit. So you can literally sell as much as you want in the state of Idaho uh, from your home. And uh, to be honest with you, as a part-time business that could potentially turn into a full-time business making a, quite a bit of money, um, it can be quite profitable because they haven't set any sales limits. So that's that's actually quite exciting. Not every state is like that, by the way. There's very few that allow you to do that. So, all right. So what are some of the allowed um, foods? What are some of the stuff that you can make and you can't make? Now, keep in mind, potentially hazardous foods are something that across the board, most states kind of ban. And those are like time or temperature sensitive uh, food products. Um, you want to stay away from those things. You know, for instance, making a, a, a T-bone steak meal with a baked potato and green beans and you want to sell it, that's really not allowed um, in a cottage food business. It's predominantly baked goods, um, a few condiments and different candies and things that are totally fine to make. Um, but when you get into things that have to be kept at a certain temperature or they're – uh, there, there are time sensitivities uh, that could potentially create bacteria on the food. Those are things you want to stay away from. So let me get into what you can do uh, as far as what you can make. Uh, bagels, brownies, and donuts, scones, um, things like rolls and cookies and muffins, cakes, uh, biscuits and breads, tortillas and sweetbreads um, are perfectly fine. Um, when it comes to candy, it's actually huge as well as the list for the candies is enormous. And keep in mind that falls on its way right now. This podcast is um, – we're doing this on September 20th, and this podcast is approaching uh, the time frame of the fall season and all. So doing festivals and fairs and, and that type of thing that's coming up, uh, candies are a huge seller. So the seasonality, by the way, of some products that you can make from home, if you're aware of it and you stay on top of it, you can really strike when the kind of when the iron's hot – and then make quite a bit of money at these places. So uh, baked candies are fine, brittles, you know, nut brittles, candy, cotton candies, um, chocolates of any kind. If you're into making your own chocolates, candies are fine. Uh, fudge and truffles are good. Um, when you get into condiments, uh, this is something that is kind of more or less a year-round thing, not necessarily a, a seasonality to them. But if you've got your own take on, like, vinegars, nut butters, uh, oils, uh, olive oils or flavor-infused oils, syrups and mustards, honeys, those are perfectly fine as well. Um, when you get into dry goods, when you want to talk about dry goods, it would be things such as pasta noodles, if you like to make your own pasta noodles and dry them, and you want to infuse them with some flavors, you know, sun-dried tomatoes, basil, etc. Those are great. Um, seasoned mixes, coffee beans, uh, which kind of surprised me, tea leaves, spices and seasonings, herbs and cereals, uh, of course, dried fruits as well. Um, when you get into pastries, um, there are a few that you can make, but keep in mind, too, pastries, you got to be careful with how you top them and what you fill them with. If it's a cheese filled of any kind that has to be kept at a certain temperature, that is a no-no. So uh, cones um, are good, pies, um, tamales are fantastic, are fine. Um, the one note about the tamales, only fruit-filled empanadas uh, cannot, of course, empanadas and tamales cannot have any type of meat, um, again, that's, that's a potentially hazardous issue. But filled with fruit is perfectly fine. Pastries are fine. 
jams and jellies. You've got a, another huge list of snacks, which kind of almost goes on and on. But anything from like a marshmallow, uh, granolas, nuts and seeds, popcorns, kettle corns, etc. These are all perfectly fine. So the couple things to keep in mind, the perishable uh, prohibited foods would be such as perishable baked, baked goods, uh, pickles, because of the acidity in it, the pH has to be at a certain level, and salsas. You just want to kind of stay away from those. If you're looking to get into those, though, you could you could do them, but you'd have to be in a commercial facility and then in a, in a, a commercially licensed and inspected by the state and such. So, so all right, so now this is something that's super important. Now, uh, direct sales. You need to make sure that the transaction takes place between you and the consumer, okay? Now, let me go back up and let me double-check my notes here because I wanted to cover uh, the selling venues. Okay, so yes, by the way, you can sell a product online in Idaho, but you have to deliver it yourself. Again, just between you and the customer. It cannot have a third party. No one can be between the two of you. But if you sold a product through your website, let's say, and you offered a delivery service, a local, a local um, delivery, um, I'm not sure you want to be driving all over the entire state, but um, you can definitely deliver it to the product to the customer, and you can sell it via the internet. Okay, home as well. You can sell it through the home if you're comfortable with having somebody come to your house and per- pick up the product. Hey, more than, more than happy to do that. Farmers markets, roadside stands, and different events. Okay, now the one thing that um, the roadside stands. Um, you want to just make sure that you've got any additional permits. Some of these farmers markets and, and events that you go to will actually have uh, maybe some different business licenses and that type of thing, but that has nothing to do with the cottage food business itself. So now another thing, now this is not required, but the, the health department in Idaho recommends that uh, cottage food operations fill out a, a what's known as food risk assessment form. Um, to kind of just confirm you know, the products that you have are, are kind of approved, um, and to make it easier for you to get uh, accepted into some of the, s- the different types of sales venues because they may request this uh, food risk assessment form that you do. Okay, uh, Food safety. So basically the health department does not require any type of training, uh, but it does recommend you take like a basic food handlers course, which, by the way, can be done online. Um, and that's actually just a – it's really a good thing for you to take just so you understand the concept of food handling and food production and stuff. So the food safety training is really – it's like about, about $20 or so um, to do it, but it's not necessarily re- required, okay? So product te- testing. Now, some types of products, like maybe like a fruit butter, uh, may be allowed, but it's depending upon the recipe is what, what they were mentioning there on the, on the website. And the reason why is that some of them have to have certain pH levels and such in them. And this is going to be dependent on what you're going to make. So you will have to contact the uh, Food Protection Program in Idaho in regards to that. Okay. Now, lastly, of course, is with all uh, home-based food businesses, if you're working off of a well, the water in the well system may need to be uh, – water supply may need to be checked just to make sure that it's, it's clean. And it's uh, clean enough for you to be cleaning equipment and utensils and working with. Okay. So now, with that being said, let me go into a little bit more um, detailed information. The one thing that is unique, though, about Idaho's um, cottage food law is that looking for specific food permits, uh, what they've done is they've actually broken up the state into seven districts. Okay. Now, within these districts, and what I'll do, like, like I said before, I'll put this link down below, and you can read more about it yourself. Um, you need to check into whatever the district is, and they show you actually a map. So wherever you're located, you need to specifically uh, notify those districts' uh, head offices. And then from there, they'll tell you more specifically about any other additional food per- permits and such that you may need. So, so do keep in mind, yes, number one, you can have a food business from your home in Idaho. And it, it can be quite lucrative because they have not set a sales limit. Okay, guys? Uh, but just keep in mind, again, like pretty much predominantly all food businesses from home, you just want to make sure that you're not creating any potentially hazardous food. Um, and then just follow the guidelines. Um, it's not that difficult, actually, to get one up and running in Idaho, which is great. And when you accompany that with making as much money as you possibly can, uh, that part-time business from your home could potentially turn into something much more lucrative um, down the road. So if you guys have any questions, do let me know down below. And as as always, I appreciate you guys taking the time to listen to the podcast. 
Um, I want to like to keep them short and sweet and to the point and give you information that you would need to get yourself up and running with your food business. And if you're not a subscriber to Marketing Food Online YouTube channel or my podcast, definitely subscribe. We've got literally 400 videos to help you out, get you up and running. If you need more consulting or one-on-one uh, work with me directly, I do offer that as well. There's always links in the description to our website, uh, marketingfoodonline.com. And there's also a lot of other resources, free resources there too, and stuff that you can purchase uh, to help you get up and running. So with that being said, I'll take care. I, I appreciate it, and we'll talk at you soon.